Hello. The following are three stories that were told to me firsthand by subscribers to this channel. These are all instances where children have experienced things and parents have doubted their experiences, only to end in horrible situations. Enjoy. The Stray Dog My five-year-old daughter absolutely loved animals. She'd always wanted to get a cat or a dog, but my severe allergies prevented us from ever being able to get a pet. Even the pets that claim to be hypoallergenic really are not, since dander comes from skin, not hair. I did buy our tank with a couple of zebrafish, but that was a mistake as these fish very quickly became my responsibility. One afternoon, while my husband was at work, I was washing the dishes. It was a nice and sunny day, and I would have much preferred to have been outside enjoying myself. My daughter was outside in our fenced-in backyard, having a tea party with her plush animals. I would like to say that I always kept a good eye on her, but sometimes I did get busy and lose track of time. But the fence in our backyard was a very high wooden fence with no gate, so I never thought it was possible that she was in any danger. When I was almost done washing the dishes, my daughter Cindy came running into the house. She was very excited and had a smile that simply reached from ear to ear. Mommy! Mommy! Cindy cried joyously. I got myself a doggy! I put down what I was doing and looked at her. What are you talking about? I asked. A doggy got into our backyard and played with me! She informed me. It told me that it was going to be my own special doggy! Well. I was really confused and very concerned. At first I was worried that a dog may have actually gotten into our backyard somehow. I immediately went into the yard to see, but there was no dog there, and there was no indication that there was any way a dog could have gotten into the yard. Where is your doggy? I asked my daughter, assuming that she had made up an imaginary pet. Oh, he had to go home, but he told me he'd come back to visit me again. When my husband got home, I told him about what had happened. He wasn't concerned about it. He had had imaginary friend when he was a child and told me that just because Cindy had wanted a dog so badly and couldn't have one, she likely made one up. I joked and asked him if he made up an imaginary friend because he couldn't find any real friends, and he stopped talking to me for the night. For the next week, things went on pretty much like they'd had that first day. While I was washing dishes or cleaning the kitchen, Cindy would be out in the backyard playing. Each time she came back and told me about her fun playing with her doggy. On Thursday, Cindy was out in the backyard playing when the strangest thing happened. I heard a bark. It was a very odd sounding bark, really deep and almost sounded kind of muffled. Well, I was immediately concerned. If a stray dog had been getting into the yard somehow, who knows what it could do to my daughter. It may have been carrying diseases or, although it has been nice to her so far, if Cindy unintentionally irritated it, the dog might attack her. I put down my washcloth and ran out the back door. What I saw with Cindy was a lot worse than a stray dog. There was a man in my backyard wearing a dog costume and playing with my daughter. It was a ratty costume and it actually made him look like he was a stray. He was on all fours, but it was easy to tell he was a tall and large man. My daughter was throwing him a ball. While he was bringing it back to her, the man saw me standing on the back porch, a horrified expression on my face. The only thing I could do was yell at him, Get the hell away from my daughter, you freak! The man immediately jumped up onto his back feet and dropped the ball. With amazing dexterity that I could not believe for a man his size, he ran off to the fence and jumped onto it, pulling himself quickly up and over the top of it. Don't go, doggy! My daughter cried as the man ran off. He was quickly gone before I could do anything more. I did call the police, but there's very little they could do. Other than the fact that the man was wearing a dog suit, I couldn't give him a description, and obviously the suit was easy for him to take off. 
My husband was livid, but we were helpless. The police just told us we should be happy that I discovered what was going on before the man either injured or kidnapped my daughter. Well, needless to mention, they were right. Two things came out of this experience. One, my daughter no longer played in the backyard by herself. Two, she finally got a real doggy, a beautiful German Shepherd, which won't let any other dogs into his backyard. As far as my allergies go, I'll deal with it to keep my daughter protected. The Monster in the Closet My name is Jeff. This story happened when I was a kid. When I was 10, my family lived in a two-bedroom house. My parents slept in one room, which was conveniently on the far end of the house. I shared the room with my seven-year-old brother, Michael. I really didn't mind sharing the room with him because I loved my little brother and the two of us got along great. Now, one night, while we were in bed, Michael tugged on my blanket. Groggily, I opened up my eyes and saw my brother looking at me. What do you want, Mike? I asked. Michael, he corrected me. He hated being called Mike. Can I sleep in bed with you? There's a monster in the closet. Well, of course I let him. He climbed in bed, gave me a hug for letting him climb in, and I lightly punched him on the shoulder as a big brother would do, and we went to sleep. The next day, I had forgotten about the event until nighttime. While I was sleeping, I again felt a tug on my blanket. Once again, Michael was asking to climb into bed with me. Can I sleep in your bed, Jeff? Michael asked. What's the matter, Michael? I asked. There's not a monster in the closet. Yes, there is, Jeff assured me. Please, Jeff. The poor little guy looked so distressed that I couldn't turn him down. He crawled in bed with me, and we went to sleep. The next afternoon, after school, my parents asked me to come in the room and have a talk with them. Michael had told them about the monster and they were concerned that I had been telling him scary stories. I was supposed to be at that age where older brothers liked to scare the younger one. I assured them I would never do such a thing and they claimed to believe me. Well, this pattern continued for about a week with absolutely no variation. My parents began to doubt me when I told them that I wasn't scaring Michael but even Michael defended me. My father took Michael to the closet, showed him around before bed one night, and thought he had proven there was no monster. But when Michael once again claimed to see a monster that night and climb into my bed, I decided to ask my parents if we could start having the dog sleep in the room with us. That night Michael was sleeping with our golden retriever Sandy at the foot of his bed. Yet again, Michael woke me up, claiming there was a monster in the closet. When I was about to tell him to climb into bed, I heard something from the closet. It was a creaking noise. Lifting my head up, I looked to the door and I saw the closet slowly opening up. Fear gripped my heart and I grabbed my brother and pulled him close to me. The door was opened considerably. We heard a noise. Our dog jumped up, growled, and ran into the closet. The door then slammed closed and we heard the dog yelping. Both Michael and I started screaming at the top of our lungs. It took a few moments, but our parents came running into the room. Michael was screaming and crying about the monster and the dog, and our parents needed to take a few moments to realize what was going on. My father then ran over to the closet and opened the door. He immediately screamed at me and Michael to get out of the room. I protested, but then he raised his voice, meaning he meant business for us to get out. And as we ran out, I did see a bit of what was in the closet. I did see our dog lying there. Well, I knew our dog was dead, but for years, I did not know exactly what happened that night. 
our parents refused to tell us. My dad finally explained it one day when I had come home from a visit from college. Apparently, there was an intruder who was getting into our house each night from the attic. He would climb into the attic window, and our closets had entrances to the attics, so he was getting into our closet from that entrance and antagonizing Michael. When he was done, he would climb back into the attic and get out of the house. When he called the dog into it, he slashed its neck and then tried to escape the house to the closet attic entrance and did get out the window. My dad told us he was picked up by the police later on, but honestly, I have no way of knowing if that was true or not. But there is one thing I want everyone to take away from this story. The boy who cries wolf may actually see a wolf at some point and you should never ignore your kids if they are scared of something. Even if you don't believe in it, even if you know it's not possible, if your kid claims it's true, there might just be a monster in his closet. The Refrigerator I live in a two-story house with all of my bedrooms on the second floor. My wife and I have four kids of different ages. This story involves a strange incident that happened with our youngest boy, Kyle, who was seven at the time the story takes place. My wife and I were in bed watching television when Kyle walked in rubbing his eyes. Dad, can you get me some water from the fridge? Kyle asked. There's a little boy hiding behind it and he won't stop teasing me. Well, we were much more concerned about our kid being up late at night than we were about a make-believe kid hiding behind the refrigerator. We kept water in the refrigerator because we didn't like our kids drinking tap water. So I walked my son down to get his water. I asked him why he thinks there's a boy hiding behind the refrigerator. He knew I wanted water for some reason, and as I got closer to the fridge, he just started whispering to me, Kyle, water, water, trip, trip, trip. Well, when we got downstairs, I first made my son look behind the refrigerator with me, and showed him there was indeed no boy hiding behind there. I then got him a nice glass of water from the dispenser, and I put him back in bed. The incident with the boy behind the refrigerator happened again about a week later. It was almost identical to the first experience. And two weeks later, almost an exact repeat of the whole situation happened again. After nearly two months where our son would almost seem to randomly come into our room during the late evening claiming a boy was behind the refrigerator, my wife and I finally began to get concerned. Although we knew there was no boy behind the refrigerator, we figured there must be something else going on. So, I talked to Kyle. I told him the next time he needed some water at night, rather than try to get it himself, he should first come into our room and I will get it for him. About a week after our talk, at about 10 p.m., Kyle entered our room and nervously asked if he could have a glass of water. Leaving Kyle in the room with my wife, I walked down to the kitchen to get the water. As soon as I was approaching the refrigerator, I heard a tiny voice saying, Kyle, water, water, trip, trip, trip. After a pause, again, water, water, trip, trip, trip. I froze, not only confused but genuinely scared. I slowly began to approach the refrigerator, and I heard it again. Water, water, drip, drip, drip. As I moved to the refrigerator, I cautiously walked to the side of it, and I peeked behind it, fully expecting to see a little boy hiding behind the refrigerator. I turned the corner and saw absolutely nothing. Well, well, not n nothing really, not nothing. I saw the furnace grating, 
and I heard the voice clearly lifting from the basement. Kyle, water, water, drip, drip, drip. I stood there in silence for a moment, wondering what to do next. As I took another step, the voice said something different. Don't get your daddy, Kyle. There's better water here in the basement. Come down to the basement, Kyle. No, oh, I didn't mess with this crap at all, and I was not going to go into the basement. Fortunately, our basement door locked from both ends, so I immediately went over and locked the basement door. Then I grabbed my cell phone and called the police. They came over and found a really nasty homeless man had been living in our unfinished basement. We never went down there for any reason because it was unfinished. And he had a stash of things in our crawl space, and apparently at night he had been coming up and getting food. He obviously was able to hear our conversations in the kitchen and knew when Kyle would be coming down for water. We didn't know what the man wanted other than shelter and if he meant us any harm, but it was unlikely he did because he was living off us. We were providing him with food, shelter, and of course water. It was just scary to realize that he was there for so long and that sometimes just because the thing in your house your kids are scared of might not be a monster doesn't mean it's not real. Hello there. This is Killer Orange Cat. Hope you enjoyed the preceding stories. I wanted to apologize for a couple things. First, this video took a while to get out, which I apologize. The second thing I need to apologize for actually is related to the first. As you could probably tell listening to this video, my voice is still kind of nasally because I still have a cold and it actually got kind of worse for a while and it is because of the cold that it took this video so long to be released. I also tried to go for shorter stories this time uh, just so I wouldn't be speaking as much as I usually do. Between the last video and this video I not only surpassed 100 subscribers but I'm now sitting at 167. So everyone who has subscribed, I want to thank you, and if you haven't, I invite you to hit the button and subscribe. I hope to do a creepy pasta next, and I just want to thank everybody again for listening, and have one final note. I hope there is a bit of a lesson that is taken from these stories, and that would be that your kids are going to tell you lots of things. They may tell you something's under the bed. They may tell you something's in the closet. They may tell you there's something standing behind you. For kids, don't assume it's make-believe. Every one of those things could be true. See you in the next video.